morning, church. Good morning. Let us all stand as we sing our first song to begin our service for today. We will be singing, Oh, to be like me. On the first stanza, ready, sing. Oh, to be like me, blessed Redeemer, this is my constant longing and prayer. Psalms chapter 29 and let us read in unison all the verses. If you are there, please say aloud, Amen. Amen. Be ready, begin. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord, 
in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the glory, glory and thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf, Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divided the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to come and discovereth the forest. And in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. The Lord sitteth upon the flood. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The grass withereth and the flowers fadeth, but the words of our, Lord, of our God stands forever. God bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning. Thank you for the good weather, O Lord. Thank you for gathering us once again to unite our hearts and minds to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask you to give us the right mind to understand the, the, the message that you are about to deliver us this morning. We ask you to bless the singing of the choir, the singing of the congregation, and bless all the parts of this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may all be seated as you listen to the choir. Losing a loved one is probably the most painful thing that can happen to anyone. Ngunit purihin ang Panginoon para sa ating mga tunay na mananampalataya. We know that death is not the end. We know that there will come a time when we are going to have a great reunion in heaven na kung saan makikita natin muli ang ating mga mahal sa buhay na unang namayapa. At makikapapapiling po natin sila hindi lang for a while but for all eternity. And as glorious as it may sound, what's even more amazing is that we're going to see the person responsible for this great reunion, no other than our Lord Jesus Christ. And oh, what a great moment that will be.
Amen. What a wonderful song. Let us continue singing. Let us all stand as we sing, He hideth my soul. We will be singing three stanzas. On the first stanza. A wonderful Savior. Ready, sing. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows a dry thirsty singing welcome to baptist bible church are you happy this morning amen. amen always good to be in the house of the lord what a great way to end the month by being in the house of the lord to thank him for who he is and what he has done throughout our lives this month of uh, april now, we have received so many blessings countless blessings and the lord deserves our worship and uh, more than that 
who He is and what He has done in our lives. Okay? So we thank the Lord for all the souls that got saved during our presentations on Easter. And then also last Friday, we had a wonderful time uh, with College Day. Okay, so we pray to, let's pray for our college. We appreciate all our faculty, the alumni, and those who have been uh, uh, students of ABBC. And let's pray that more will surrender to the field and that they will be trained in our school, training God's, preparing God's people for God's work is the theme of the, uh, the motive of ABBC so that we can be able to train more people as they go out and preach the gospel. Okay, so don't forget yung mga po natin, uh, Announcements po natin this afternoon, all the young people would like to extend our invitation to be here 2 o'clock po as we study again the wonderful book of Philippians. And then, uh, don't forget our Wednesday prayer meeting. Uh, it's a time when you can be able to pray for one another. If you have some prayer requests, you can uh, call the church anytime. Uh, you can email us or on Facebook page so that we can include it in our prayer list. Uh, please do pray for the Palit uh, Ang family. Uh, Doctora da, da, uh, Daryl uh, Palit Ang went home to be the Lord, with the Lord last uh, last night. So let's continue to pray for Pastor Palit Ang and his son uh, during this time of the whole family during this time that God's comfort for their family. And um, also do, do pray for our um, we have a list outside and please do pray take one and pray for the list the prayer list that are on, listed there so that we can be able to pray for one another that we can know that uh, Baptist Bible Church cares for all of us okay and then uh, yung pong ating uh, next month will be Mother's Day two weeks from now okay so labor uh, month of May we'll be having uh, Mother's Day so how many mothers do we have right now can you raise your hand Yan. So, yan. Maraming maraming salamat po. Tama-tama. Yung, yung Mother's Day, laging, nas, laging natatapat sa Labor Day. Talaga naman siguro yung mga mothers talaga ang hardworking. Ano po? So, we praise the Lord for our mothers. Uh, and then, we will be recognizing you next month. We're going to uh, have a uh, guest speaker. And then, that will be a wonderful time to honor you. Okay? So, invite more mothers. If you have your mothers with you, bless the Lord. If not, Either there, if they are in the province, then you can invite them via Zoom to watch us. And um, also you can invite a neighbor or a friend or someone in the office whom you consider to be a, a mother to you. And then bring them to church. They will be able to hear the gospel message. Okay? And then to honor also them uh, for being your mom here. Okay? So yung po yung ating mga sa darating na month ng May. And also, I mentioned it's Labor Month, no? So, kina, yung mga ginagawa po na ministry natin sa church, uh, we must be able to remember them. If you would like to serve the Lord in whatever capacity you can do, we po tayong orchestra. If you know how to play an instrument, we have the choir. We have, if you would like to go with our uh, extension classes every Saturday po to be able to reach kids with the gospel. Okay, uh, so eh, just drop by here in church every 3 o'clock in the afternoon po. Alam po, medyo mainit ang panahon. So, uh, ta, talaga naman scorching heat. Pero we praise the Lord for those uh, who have uh, volunteered and sacrificed their time and effort so that they can be able to reach more children for the Lord. Okay, and then, uh, yung po, yung sa, sa, sa baba din po, meron po every Sunday. Meron din po silang uh, junior church din doon. Uh, so, Baptist Bible Church always cares to the whole family. We reach the children so that we can be able to reach the, the whole family, the fathers and the mothers and the entire family so that they can know, uh, they, can have, uh, uh, they can come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and see them serving the Lord. And that's what Baptist Bible Church is aiming so that they can uh, rec uh, have a relationship with Jesus Christ and the whole family will be serving the true and the living God. Also, don't forget our uh, pay, pay promise giving, our giving for the Lord. We are a little bit uh, behind our, our uh, goal. Every time I come the, uh, to the church, ang una-una kong tinitignan yung ating chart dito. Yung pun chart natin, that is just an indication po. Hindi po display lang yan. Actually, that is also uh, an, excourage, an encouragement to us. Pag nakikita natin, let's pray that we can be able to give uh, what we have promised to the Lord, gave it faithfully, so that we can help partner with our missionaries that we have been supporting in carrying out the gospel message. 
different parts of the world here in the Philippines doon din po sa mga uh, regions beyond okay so we're uh, 70,000 po per week ang ating goal to be able to support our missionaries both local and foreign so we'd like to encourage one another to please pray and give faithfully to the Lord and I'm sure that the Lord will continue to bless us sino po ba nagutom dito sa isang linggo na nagbigay sila sa Panginoon wala pa okay so God is always faithful as we give faithfully to Him. Okay, so yun po yung ating mga announcement. Uh, our missionary for this week pala ay uh, si missionary Elijah Rapada from Papua New Guinea. We praise the Lord for, if you're going to read your bulletin, we praise the Lord for what God is doing in the ministry there in Papua New Guinea. So let's continue to pray for them. And for also for uh, our missionaries that we are supporting. Okay? So next month, darating na po si Pastor Felix Arma and his family will be here on Forlo. Uh, we have uh, have a place to play, stay. Uh? So we praise the Lord for that. Malapit na malapit lang sa church. Diyan lang sa tabi. Ayan, so we praise the Lord for answering our prayer. And uh, malapit lang. So if they can... Uh, go to other places and leave their children. Ay, pwedeng iwanan dito sa office, dito sa staff, okay? At uh, they can stay in church. So, we praise the Lord for that. Thank you for, uh, uh, thank you, uh, praise the Lord for that and thank you to the person that uh, accommodated us, okay? Ang babayaran po natin dyan ay, uh, I think it's 13,000 per month and uh, with a refrigerator. Ayan. So, hindi na po, may kailangan na po ang refrigerator. So, again, I would like to also to invite, to uh, encourage you. Pagdating po nila dito, hindi nila, wala silang dala sa aeroplano, kundi damit lang nila. So, pagdating dito, may mga pangangailangan sila. Praise the Lord, may refrigerator na. O, hindi naman pwedeng doon sila matutulog at saka doon sila kakain lang, di ba? Pero, kailangan natin ng mga gamit din. And if you have an extra at home that you would like to give or lend, okay, so pakisabihin nyo lang po sa staff. Okay, sa office and then we will uh, uh, have it para meron po sila pagdating nila dito Lord, will, Lord willing by uh, May 25. Yan, nandito na po sila. Okay, so uh, yan po yung mga ibang ating mga kaganapan sa bu- next month and looking forward to that. Okay, so do we have anyone visiting with us for the very first time? This is your first time to be a Baptist Bible Church. Meron ako nakita doon sa gitna sa grupo sila. Ay, may nakasabit dito. Pag may nakasabit dito ang pangalan, we are so honored that you are here with us today to, to join us as we worship the Lord. Can you please stand up? Yan, on my left. And then, meron po sa gitna. Yan, okay. Meron pa po ba? We are so glad that you were able to come. And uh, welcome to the friendliest church in Metro Manila. Shall we all please stand up and let's sing our welcome song. Let us shake hands while we sing our welcome song. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. Kilala mo si Kristo Ligaya ng buhay Kung siya'y manunubos mo Babaguhin ang iyong buhay Kung siya'y kakamtan Ang maging kay Kristo ay tunay na be seated as you listen to the special number.
every man on earth is given just one life every life on earth is but a vapor it appears that it's gone with a record of what's done then we stand alone at the judgment seat of Christ, God's Holy Son. We must all bow down at the judgment seat of Christ. We must give account for the things we've done with our lives. I will leave to everyone. Uh, a while ago when Brother Nibel was leading us in, leading us in singing, uh, and while, while the song, I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and then when it comes to the chorus, uh, draw me nearer, near blessed, blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died. Sabi ko sa sarili ko, oh, ang ganda ng introduction nito sa aking sermon, that uh, the gospel the atoning work of Jesus Christ must be always central to our, to our church and to every aspect of our lives. Hindi po, hindi po ito isang bagay na dapat natin isasang tabi. 
But in every preaching and everything that happens in our church, the gospel must be always keep central. I have attended um, several conferences in the last few months. And one of the things that I notice is this. Many people, many preachers, when they preach, they assume the gospel. They think that the people to whom they are addressing to uh, knows the gospel, that they do not take the time to explain what the gospel is all about. Oh, my friends, this is tragic. Just imagine, to be able to attend a missions conference, supposedly to proclaim the gospel to other people, and yet the gospel is not being addressed. To me, it is a waste of time. And whenever preaching is being done, and the gospel is not, ad is not presented, it is tragically also a waste of time. So, I am happy that in our church, the gospel is always central, and we must keep it that way. Because the gospel that saved us is, the also, is also the gospel that will sustain us in our spiritual life, and it's also the gospel that brings hope, that brings the future hope that, we'll, that uh, we believers share, the, go, the hope that will lead us to the fullest experience, the final rela realization of our salvation and eternal life. Shall we all turn our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians? Although we have taken this in our Sunday school, um, but this thing has been so heavy on my heart that I need to uh, use this as our preaching, even though we have discussed this already in our Sunday school lesson. Shall we all stand up as we open our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we are going to read from verses 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, in that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the word that you have given us. This is your word, your, God, your, in, your inspired word. Oh God, I pray that even as we deal with this topic, we, we help us to see the importance of the gospel. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. The main idea that I will be dealing with you today is this. Because the gospel is the power of God to save, we must keep that central in our church. And in the, uh, a while ago in the passage that we have read, we have learned that the gospel is the power of God to salvation. The gospel is the story that tells us of God's solution to man's problem. God's solution to man's problem. And this solution is not through our own efforts, but rather the divine initiative that God has sent to our fallenness. Remember that we are sinners. We are sinners and we are condemned to hell. But God, who is righteous and who is just, who will send people to hell because of their sin, sin has also provided the solution by which we can be freed from this great dilemma by sending his only begotten son into this world to take on humanity, to live like us, to take on our nature, live a perfect life, and then offer this life as a sacrifice for our sin, that by putting our faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, we would be saved. Now, this is very evident in the text. But we must never forget that the gospel is not only for our saved, for the unsaved. The gospel is also for the saved, and even more so. Brother Nibel, can you please give me the water? I forgot. It is God's divine solution for the human dilemma, but it is also our strength for our daily life. 
This morning, I'm going to give you five reasons or five things by which the gospel should be to us. First of all, the gospel, why the gospel is important, why the gospel should be kept central is this. The gospel is the foundation of our faith. Ang Ibanghelyo ang siyang fundasyon ng ating paniniwala. And earlier in our Sunday school, we have stated the cardinal truths that are tied to the gospel that when you deny those truths, you are automatically denying the gospel. <clears throat> this is the message by which we must preach. This is the core of the of the scripture. Every, <coughs> every passage in the Old Testament is pointing forward to what Jesus Christ is accomplished and every passage in the New Testament is pointing backward to what he has done. This is why this is the foundation of our, uh, of our faith. And even Paul himself tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. Of the, as the gospel is being foundational to our faith. This is what he said. And I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not with the excellency of speech and of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. You know why Paul, in many of his epistles, in most of, in all of his epistles, is always addressing the gospel because the gospel is threatened of being diluted wherever he would go, wherever there would be churches that would be, would be established, there would be always versions of false, of false gospel that would be, that would be present. <coughs> That's why he said, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, of course, this does not mean that he did not preach on everything else. But to the believers, he realized that the gospel is very important. This is also the reason why he planned to go to Rome. And if ever that would not be possible, he wrote an epistle reminding them of the gospel. Book sampo natin ang ating Bible sa book of Romans, chapter 1. Ito po ang kanyang sabi, ito po yung kanyang reason kung bakit niya gusto mong pumunta sa Rome. Sa Romans, chapter 1, ito po ang sinasabi niya sa verse um, 14. I am a debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, to both the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. Now remember, he is, he is going to preach. He told them that I am going to preach to you as believers the gospel to you that are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greeks. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. You would see here that Paul's desire, why he wants to visit Rome, why he wrote the epistle, is to remind them of the gospel because the gospel is not only for the saved, unsaved, but also for the saved. The gospel is for believers also. The reasons why, in my assessment of the past observation, the reason why some preachers neglect the gospel because they think it's only for the unsaved. No, my friends and my brothers and sisters in Christ, the gospel is also for the believers. It is the foundation of our faith and every message that we must preach is, must be founded on the gospel. This is the example that he sent forth in Ephesians chapter 4. The, the book of Ephesians is a wonderful epistle that is, that is presenting the gospel in so rich and marvelous way. This is what he said in Ephesians chapter 4. Now after he told them about the effects 
of the gospel on, their, on them. About the gospel that saved them and placed them in the heavenlies and made them uh, co-heirs with Jesus Christ. That throughout all the ages, those who put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ will be displayed as trophies of His grace. Now He told them to walk worthy. Of a life that is pleasing to God and life that is reflecting the gospel. Now this is how they are to live as believers, as people who have been saved by Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at verses uh, 31 to 32. This is what he said. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all manner, malice. So he is challenging them toward a behavior that, would, uh, that, that is pleasing to God. But he did not just end there, end there telling them what to do. In verse 32, he said, Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. The basis of his appeal is based on the gospel. The reason why you should do this is the very fact that Jesus Christ, that God the Father has forgiven you on the account of Jesus Christ, on Based on the finished work of Jesus Christ, you must be forgiving to one another because God the Father, through Jesus Christ, has forgiven you. Ethical instruction are good. But if the gospel is absent, it is just a form of moralistic injunction. That doesn't make us no different from the Jews and what is preached in their synagogue, from the Muslim in their mosque, and the ethical injunction of Buddhism and Hinduism and all of the world's ism. The distinctiveness of the Christian message is that we preach the gospel. Ang pagiging distinct po dito is that Jesus Christ died for our sin, rose again, and He is the power by which we live a life that is holy unto God. Without the gospel, then we are not different. What else? In verse uh, 22 to 28, this is what the Word of God says, Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20, um, uh, chapter 4, 5 verses, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 32 to 28. This is what the Word of God says. Now these are just examples. 22 says, Wives, submit yourself, submit yourself to your own husband, even as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. So wives are being admonished to, sub, to be in submission to their own husband as the as the as is de demanded by the gospel. What else? Therefore, as the church is subject to, unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Husband, husbands, love your wife even as Christ also has loved the church and gave himself for it. He made an appeal to submission. He made an appeal to uh, for the husband to love their wives on the basis of the gospel. Paul preached all other message, messages, but everything that he preached is founded on the gospel. That he might sanctify it, verse 20, 26, and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having a spot, or wrinkle or any such thing but it should be holy and without blemish so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies for he that loveth his life wife loveth himself so as the church is as the wife is to be in submission to the husband it is because of what the lord has done for us he is the one who saved us and necessarily 
necessarily. As, the, as God the, had sent Jesus Christ to be our Savior, we should be in submission to Him. And so, wives must also be in subjection to their own husband. So, ginamit niya ang gospel bilang illustration kung papano ang church na tinubos ng Panginoon, magpapasakop sa Panginoon, ganun din ang mga asawang babae magpapasakop sa kanila, sa mga husbands. And husbands also are to love their wives even as Christ loved the church and gave up Himself for her. Now, this is a gospel already presented. And whenever we preach on this passage, we must not neglect the gospel. Whatever topic it may be, whether we are discussing about prayer, if you preach about prayer and the gospel is absent, you know what? You have just wasted your time. No, papano ito man natin may preach ang prayer with the gospel as the foundation. The, the question is this, bakit tayo nakakapag-pray? Because the Bible said that because of Christ's sacrificial death on the cross, there is no more condemnation. We are accepted by God the Father and we have the free access to God. Sabi dun sa book of Hebrews, because of what Jesus Christ has died for us, has saved us, we have now we can now come boldly to the throne of grace because we have now the access to come to Him. Preaching about prayer without the gospel is simply moralism and legalism. When we're talking about worship, it must be based on the gospel. When we are talking about Bible characters such as Moses, Joshua, Caleb, and everything that they would do is only, is only pointing forward. The good thing that they do is just pointing in some way to Jesus Christ. And if Jesus Christ is absent in teaching, whether it be biographical, topical, then that message is just a waste of time. It is the, from the gospel must be present because it should be the foundation of our message. Second, the gospel is um, important because it is the filter by which we view the circumstances in our lives. This is Paul's attitude. Tingnan po natin, lalo na pag dumarating sa atin ang trials, if we are not gospel-oriented, it is easy for us to give up. Buksan po natin dito sa book of Philippians. This is a very powerful verse. Remember that this is a prison epistle. Paul was in Rome, and he should be sad, but instead he's encouraging the Philippians to rejoice. This is an epistle of joy written by someone who is in prison, who is attacked by, by believers, intimidated by believers, fellow workers, accused by false brethren, imprisoned by the Roman government, and yet he is encouraging he wrote an encouraging epistle. Ito po ang sabi niya. Now, the people at Philippi were worried about Paul. Nasa kulungan siya. So they do not know uh, what's going on in him. They know that he's in prison. And if in those times you are in prison, you know what? You could die of hunger. Because they do not have a welfare system just like we have today that would take care of the prisoners. So they took collection of money and sent it in the hand of Epaphroditus and sent it to Rome. And he wrote this epistle to tell them not, not to worry about me, that I am in jail. Because this, I am viewing my trials in my, uh, that happened in my life in terms of the gospel. Let's read verse 12. But I would you that you should understand, brethren, that the things that happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. He said, don't worry about me because my imprisonment served as a platform by which I could preach the gospel. I may be unjustly uh, accused. I may be even attacked by fellow brethren, but don't worry because it serves God's purpose. God has a purpose in it. 
so that in my bond, so that my bonds in Christ, in in Christ, um, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. Sabi niya, you know what? Because I was put in prison, my imprisonment is, I'm not necessarily my bonds in Rome. I am not a prisoner of Nero, but I am a prisoner of Christ and God put me in that situation so that the gospel could spread out. That even in the palace, what he mean by that is the Praetorian guards. Now, the Praetorian guards are the ones who are guarding him. Six hours every day, he would be chained to a Roman soldier, two Roman soldiers guarding him. Kasi important yung prisoner siya eh. They are guarding him. Dalawa, naka-chain sa kanya. Everywhere he go, naka-chain sa kanya. Wala ka talagang privacy. Kahit sa mga personal necessities. But, itong mga Praetorian guards, itong sinabi dito ng guards sa palace, these are the best of the best of the Roman soldiers. They are the Marines, SEAL, uh, Army, Army Rangers rolled in one. Pero ano bang nangyari? Sabi niya, na-spread ang gospel sa mga sundalo. Tingnan natin nga dito, and even as we would read dito sa Philippians chapter 4, ito ang nangyari sa Solosia, uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 22. All the saints salute you, chiefly, they that are of Caesar's household, ito rin yung Praetorian guards, nasave sila. Guess what? They were chained to Rome and you know to Paul. And you know what? You probably could have guessed what Paul would talk to them while the in the next six hours that they hours that they were chained to him. He would talk to them about the gospel and they got saved. And now, because of such imprisonment, he was had the opportunity to present the gospel to the highest government offices, officers. Ano pang nangyari? That is, that the, in my bands in Christ are manifest in all palace and in all other places. Wow. They might think that they have silenced Paul, but actually, they are doing him a favor by putting him in a place where the gospel could be sounded uh, greatly. And many brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. And not only that, not only that the gospel was preached in places where, could, where I could not go as a free man, he said, when the brethren heard of it, what happened? They were emboldened by what happened to Paul. Ang imprisonment ni Paul, sa halip na baka pagpahina sa mga brethren, pinatapang pa sila. Now, ito po, another thing that happened to them is may mga taong, believers sila, pero ingit sila kay Paul. So, ginagawa nila ang lahat ng bagay para mapahirapan ang ministry ni Apostle Paul. Para ma-intimidate, mahirapan ang kanyang kalooban. Anong sabi niya? Some preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, and other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel, not withstanding then, or what then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and either in do rejoice here, and will rejoice. In face of suffering and just suffering from the Roman government and from brethren who have false motive, who are trying to intimidate him, he said, I rejoice. Because I take the gospel, I view the gospel I view my sufferings in terms of the gospel. It's very hard for us believers, for us doing the ministry here in our church. If kami ang gumagawa tapos may nag oppose we need your help. We need your help. Can you just imagine what happened to Paul? 
Binabantayan yung lahat ng kilos niya para makapagsabi lang sila ng maling accusation. Oh, si Paul na preach na uh, when sin abounded, grace des did more abound. So he's preaching na, okay, let's continue sinning. Binabalik to ang kanyang mga sinasabi para makahanap ng accusation sa kanya. Binabantayan kung saan sino mga pinupunt ang mga nakakausap niya and try to uh, try to uh, dissuade them from following Paul or believing in Paul. Fellow believers yan. Instead of serve, doing service, they are doing surveillance. Instead of being an encouragement, he, Paul is facing intimidation. Instead of gathering help, anong ginagawa? They were hinderers. Instead of being a co-laborer, they are critics. Ang hirap kaya gumawa na halimbawa si Paul na lang na tapos uh, he is go, he is pushing his way against the ano against the wind. But you know nangyari? He is viewing life in terms of the gospel. He this is the way by which he views his circumstances. The gospel is the filter by which he view the circumstances that happens in his life. Dito tayo makakatagal. Dito tayo makaka-endure. When our, when our mindset is based on what the Lord allows in my life, that even though I am suffering this way, God is putting me as a platform by which His message could get across. So the gospel is the foundation of our faith. The gospel is the filter by which we view our circumstances. Next is this. The gospel is the frame by which we live our life. Philippians chapter 1, verses 27 to 30. Ito pong sinasabi. After telling them about the encourage, uh, after encouraging them about Christ's return, this is what he said. Only let your conversation be as becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come to see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit and with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe in his name, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which he saw in me, and now to hear in me. The gospel is the frame by which we live our life. Because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, sabi dito ni Paul, let your the, let the way that you live your life is fitting to the gospel that you believe in. In what way? As you unite together, strive together for the faith of the gospel. Ginamit po dito yung imagery na mga athletes, yung mga ano, that, that they would fight together if, as a team as they fought the opposing party in one spirit, striving together for the faith of the gospel. That the gospel is the basis of their unity. What else? It, all, it is also their strength in facing their adversities. Anong sabi niya po dito? And nothing be terrified by your adversaries. Uh, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given on the behalf of Christ, not only to believe in his name, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which he saw in me and now to be in me. Now, he said, them, he said, he said to them, remember this, that do not be terrified even though you are facing persecution. The word terrified there is a very strong word. I think this is only used once in the New Testament. But this is used elsewhere in the writings that were done in the history. Um, this word is talking about 
uh, being frightened terribly. Yung grabe yung kanyang pagkatakot. Na halimbawa, uh, kung yan ay gabing-gabi na, gabing-gabi na, tapos yung biglang may tum- doon sa kung saan naka, nandun doon yung mga kabayo, biglang nagkaroon ng sound, magkakakaw siya ng istamp- stampede na magkakagulo na parang ang mga lahat ng mga kabayo ay magbabanggaan at matatakot. Ganon ang gamit na klase ng takot na huwag kayong mahintakutan. Siguro ang word dito sa Tagalog, mahintakutan. Ma- huwag kayong magpanik ng grabe. Whenever you are faced with adversity, whenever you are faced with trial, this word is used also in the writings na tungkol din sa takot na naramdaman ng gera during the Battle of Philippi na uh, aware yung mga taga-Philippi kasi mga sundalo sila. During those times, yung mga, mar- mga sundalo ni na, ni na Cassius sa kanibrutos, uh, nakapag-face sila dito sa, sa mga sundalo ni Mark Anthony. Nang naglaban yon maski mas malaki ang puwersa dito ni na Cassius sa kanibrutos, twice ang kanilang size ng kanilang army, natalo sila ng mga force ni Octavian sa kani ano ni Mark Anthony sa grabing takot nila nagpakamatay sila dahil yun ang gamit ng word na yon sa word na terrified and nothing very ter- terrified of your adversaries sabi wag kayong mahintakutan kung nagkakaroon kayo ng mga kalaban inuupos kayo why the fact that you are going through adversities is a sign that you are saved And the very fact that these people oppose you is the fact that they are unsaved. Sabi dito, and nothing be terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition. Pag sila ay kinakalaban kayo, ibig sabihin nila na sila, ito ang tanda ng kanilang pagiging lost, ng kanilang damnation. But to you, it is an evidence, an evidence of your salvation and that It is also an evidence that you belong to God. Why? Sabi niya, For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe in His name, but also to suffer for His sake. You know what? Faith in Christ and suffering goes hand in hand. Kaya kung kayo believer at nakaranas kayo ng suffering, remember this. Remember this verse. Suffering and belief in Jesus Christ comes in one package. Now, ang word dito ang ginamit dito sa unto you it is given is the Greek word karitsumai. That means that God, something that is given as a gift that you don't deserve. That means faith is a gift given by God as well as suffering is a gift given by God. Maraming sabi mo, Brother Dennis, ayoko ng ganyang regalo, ayoko mag-suffer. Hindi, kasama yan sa one, one package deal yan. If you believe in Jesus Christ, suffering comes, comes with it because, tandaan po natin, this world is against God and such suffering is a result of the fact that we are living in a sin curse world. So, the gospel is our strength in our adversities. When we are going... Through suffering, just because you are proclaiming the gospel, tanda po natin. Tanda yan ng kaw ay ligtas. Hindi yan tanda na ang favor ng Panginoon ay wala sa iyo. It is, a fav- it is an evidence of your salvation. So, this is how we should view suffering. It must also, it, uh, the gospel should be the filter, the, the frame by which we live our life that we will be able to endure suffering because it is the assurance that we belong to God. It is the assurance that we have, we have been saved. What else? The gospel is the fountain that our attitudes, attitudes and behavior must spring from. Ito po yung pinaka-fountain, pinag-uugatan na, ng behavior and attitudes. Ito ang ating pinaka-model for our attitudes. Ito po ang sabi ni Apostle Pablo. Now, the Church of Philippi, maski yan ay darling congregation, mayroon pong problema. Nagkakaroon po dito ng division. 
Ang division is caused by two women, Judeas and Sintike, at dinadrag nila ang buong congregation doon. Kaya nga sabi po ni, 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 niya dito, sa na mag-away-away kayo, itong gawin ninyo. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. You see, Jesus Christ is the example for our attitudes, that for our attitude that even though he, he is God, he is existing uh, as God and he is equal with God. He made himself of no reputation. He made himself nothing and took on him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, of things on earth, and <clears throat> things under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. May kalugtong pa yun. Sa behavior. Sabi dito, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring, and disputings, that ye might be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shines as light in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, nor have labored in vain. Neither labored in vain. So, the gospel is the fountain by which our attitudes and behavior must spring from. Ang ating response sa word, ang ating pag-respond, ang ating mindset must we always be dictated by the gospel. You see, the gospel is not only for the unsaved, it's also for the saved. So not only that the gospel is the foundation of our faith, not only that the gospel is the filter by which we view our circumstances in life, the, not only that the gospel is the frame that, by which we live our life or is the fountain of our attitudes and behavior, but also, lastly, the gospel is the fuel that empowers and motivates us for service. Yan po. Ang gospel, ang ating strength, yan ang nag-motivate sa atin, yan ang nagbibigay sa atin ng ng desire and reason to continue in service. In this passage of 1 Corinthians, after dealing with them the gospel and also the return of Jesus Christ, based on his, or based on his exhortation, anong sabi niya doon sa 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58? Puntahan po natin yon. Yan po ay napaka-importanting passage uh, na sinabi natin, na mababasa natin. Sabi po dito, verse 27, But thanks be to God. Now, anong pinapasalamatan niya? That because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, He has given us a hope. And one of these days, death itself will be defeated. And we will live with Jesus Christ eternally in glorified bodies with Him forever and forever. Anong sabi niya dito? But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He, blessed be God. Thanks be to God who continually gives us victory, who continually lead us in triumphal procession, victory tri uh, uh, parade through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have this victory. We have to thank God because God continually gives us victory over sin and death. And therefore, the gospel, the victory of Jesus Christ over sin and death is our confidence in service. Hindi tayo talunan po. Because of what Jesus Christ has done, we are continually victorious. Now the world may not recognize that, but God sees 
our situation. He continually sustains us. And this is true what Jesus Christ has done. On the cross. Napakagandang isipin na mag- makakapagpatuloy tayo sa paglingkod sa Kanya kasi victorious tayo. That even the, tra- the suffering of this life is unable to stop and stamp down the gospel and the power of God in us. What else? Christ's victory over sin and death is our assurance that our service to Him matters. Anong sabi niya doon sa 58? Memorize natin ito. Pero tandaan natin, is as always in the context of the gospel. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Because of the gospel truth and the final fulfillment of our salvation, when we will be with Him, that means that every work that we do matters. Kaya nga nung sabi niya, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, abounding always in the work of the Lord. Ang pagtatrabaho natin sa Panginoon, dapat po hindi, ano, hindi seasonal. Hindi lang kung convenient sa atin. Hindi lang kung halimbawa gusto natin. We are to continually abound because what we do to Jesus Christ really matters. Can you just imagine, sabi dito, magbigay ka lang ng cold water in the name of the disciples, you will in no wise lose your reward. But how much more if you give your life for service? Everything that we do for Christ matters because God keeps the record. But more than that, it's because Jesus Christ has defeated death by what he has done. So, how do we put, put these things together? How we put these things to life? As believers, we must base our security and identity in what the Lord has accomplished on our behalf as revealed in the gospel. You see, gospel is for believers too. Huwag natin kakalimutan yan. Huwag natin sasabihin na ang, ayan na naman, magpipreach na naman yung mga preachers dito sa gospel. Hindi ba kayo nagsasawa niyan? Why do you so get hung up on the gospel? No. We need a daily reminder because we forget every day. We need to be reminded of the gospel every day because we tend to forget every day. Kagaya nga ng sinabi ni Jerry Bridges, it is the gospel that continues to remind us that our day-to-day acceptance with the Father is not based on what we do for God but on what Christ did for us. Sometimes there are in our life we think na nag-fail naman ako sa Panginoon. Lagi na lang ako nag-fail. Lagi ko na lang siya na-disappoint. But you have to remember that our acceptance with the Father is not on what we do for Him but what Christ has done for us. Ang ganda po nito ma-equip natin sa ating puso. Kasi hindi natin pagbibasihan ang ating kaligtasan at siguridad sa ating performance kung di sa ginawa ng Panginoon sa ating sa krus ng Kalbaryo. What else? As a church, we must put the gospel in highest priority. We do it by making sure that every ministry has the proclamation of the gospel as the goal. Halimbawa, magkaroon man tayo ng feeding program and from time to time we do that. Nagkakaroon tayo ng relief operation. We don't just do it para may masabi na mabuti tayong ginawa. We do it with the gospel proclamation in mind. As I have said earlier, dito sa bawat ministry, sa children's ministry, sa outreach natin, sa visitation ministry, sa uh, ABBC, sa Royal Christian Academy, Kung magkakaroon ng presentation, please, make, let's make it sure that the gospel ma- proclamation should be the highlight. Hindi lang side note. Hindi lang yung pantapos ng program. Kung magkakaroon man tayo ng kantata or any event, make sure that the proclamation of the gospel has a goal na ang uninterrupted proclamation of the gospel would be the goal. 
What else? Every preaching and teaching done must be faithful to the gospel truths. This is a reminder for us who preach here. Kung mabigyan kayo ng assignment, well, remember this, that whatever passage you may read, remember it's always pointing to the gospel in some way. When the gospel is conspicuously absent in our preaching, what we are saying indirectly is that we do not need a person and the work of Christ. We are implying that we can fix our own problem by ourselves. Remember this, we will not only be judged by what we say, but also by what we do not say. So, lastly, let us invest our lives, money, time, resources, and possessions that others may hear the gospel. Tingnan po natin ito, na view our everything that we own in terms of the gospel. Pinagkalob yan sa iyo ng Panginoon for the proclamation of the gospel. Binigyan ka ng Panginoon ng mga bahay para gamitin ka na sila rin makapakinig sa Ebanghelyo. Ang mga relationships natin at ang mga opportunities natin, tingnan natin kung mag-open door ang Panginoon for gospel opportunities at gamitin natin yan. Maaring mayroon kang profession dito, doctor. Be a Christian doctor and that people would know that you are a Christian by witnessing to them. Mayroon tayo po ditong nurse na nagtatrabaho during COVID. I will not mention her name, pero ito po ang ginagawa niya. Sa mga patients layo ng mga dying, she was witnessing to them. Risking contamination and exposure mabigyan niya lang ng pag-asa, ng, gasp, ng kaligtasan ang mga tao na nakapakinig ng Ibanghelyo. And I think two Sundays ago, she was here. And what was a blessing to see that person na nagpa, nag, ano niya, talagang sinusuong niya ang kanyang buhay, ganun ka sa, siya sa kaselos na mak, ang, nagamitin niya ang kanyang professions para makakapakinig ang ibanghel, ng Ibanghelyo ang mga taong may, mayroon siyang contact. And also, uh, I remember sister, uh, I remember right now sister Dr. Dar, that she had given up her profession para ma proclaim ang gospel. It's not a waste when you give up your profession or anything for God, it's a gain. Because you will in no wise lose your reward. Kung ginagamit mo, anuman na mayroon kayo, mas gaano man yan ka simple na gawain, na magtatrabaho para sa Panginoon, mag-arrange dyan ng, ng chair to tulong dito sa anumang aspeto ng ministry ng church natin, you know what, you will in no wise lose your reward. Use, do, use those things for the proclamation of the gospel. Pero kung hindi ka pa ngayon nakakilala sa Panginoong bilang tagapagligtas, I beg you not to depend on your own effort, not to depend on your own religion, but depend fully on what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. You are a sinner in need of a savior. And Jesus Christ is the one who took your place on the, sea, on the cross of Calvary. That's why you must come to him and receive him as your Lord and savior today. Shall we all stand up, please? And, be, and let's pray before I, uh, we have the opportunity to respond. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the son whom you had sent into the cross, who died on our behalf and was raised again so that we could have salvation. Lord, if there's anyone here who is not yet saved, I pray, O oh God, that, he would, that that person would come and receive you as, your, as their Lord and Savior. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If the message has touched you in any way, I pray that you would come forward. Shall we turn our hymnals to song number, number 383? Jesus paid it all. And if the message has spoken to you about anything, you may be a believer and you, um, God has taught you to give your life for I His service. Hear the Savior say, I urge you to come thy strength and give you, uh, dedicate your life to Him. Child of weakness, Whether it be to forsake a sinful relationship, Give your life for service.
to do some things what you have neglected doing before. Why not give your life to Him? Had left a crimson stain. He I the Lord is calling you for full-time ministry. This is the best opportunity to, for you to come and respond. Thy power and thine alone. If you are not yet saved, we ask you to come and receive him as Savior. So we have people here, we have ladies who came forward, so we will be needing some uh, uh, people to assist them. Meron pa po ba? So they need to be dealt with, so meron pa po dyan. He washed it white as snow. For nothing good have I Whereby thy grace to claim I'll wash my garments white In the blood of The gospel of is too Calvary precious to be neglected We must make the gospel Jesus our most guarded treasure Hindi natin isasa walang bahala Meron pa po ba? Sin had left a crimson stain He washed We have one more song This gives you an opportunity to respond Whatever your uh, desire may be I stand in Him complete Jesus died my soul to save my lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow Okay, thank you very much. And then, uh, remain standing as I ask the users to please come forward. And this, okay, so lahat po ng mga um, users, punta po kayo dito po so, so that we would be able to uh, take our offering. offering. And may I ask Brother uh, Tim Cristobal to lead us in our offertory prayer. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this, uh, uh, you, this lesson you have given us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that may bless uh, these provisions that you have given us, Lord, that may be used uh, for your glory on this earth. Thank you so much, Lord, for everything and that they will be done. This I ask and pray, Lord, in your mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, thank you very much. And at this time, we ask uh, first-time visitors to please stand up. Pakita yun lamang po ng mga first-time visitors natin. Okay, we're happy for you uh, attending our church. Mayroon pa po? Uh, kindly come up front so that we could give you a proper welcome uh, para sa ating, ano, uh, bago mag-dismiss, makausap namin kayo, ma-welcome po namin kayo. And we have a place there downstairs na kung saan we would like to, ano, to talk to you. Sige, papunta lamang po sa harapan na. Uh. Uh, so we are happy for your ano, for your visit sa aming simbahan. Okay, this time I call on Brother Redmond to please come and dismiss us in prayer. Okay, tayo pong la tayong lahat sa ating pong dismissal.
Paki-welcome po ng mga visitors. Okay, let's uh, all pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for uh, this service this morning, Lord. We thank you for uh, the visitors who came. And we thank you especially, Lord, for our salvation and for the important message we heard this morning, Lord, uh, something we needed to learn. Uh, Lord, we pray that you um, help us, uh, guide us as we put the gospel at the center of our lives, not just here in church, but also in our own uh, personal lives, Lord. Uh, Lord, as we dismiss and as we go our separate ways, we pray that you keep us safe and you bring us back safely this afternoon. Uh, give us strength for the rest of the day. And this we ask in Jesus' name, amen.